Last time out, we caught up with ESPN's Marley Rivera. Here's part two of our interview. Uh, as a pioneer yourself, only the second woman on this Yankee beat. Uh, what does it mean to you to be, you know, basically trying to make significant inroads yeah. in that regard? Second woman of color, three women. We got to be <laughs> so it's like second woman of color after after uh, after Claire Smith. So certainly, um, I, I as you know, Bobby, I used to be on the Yankees beat, and then I became a national writer, and I sort of have a hybrid uh, position now, kind of doing both. And it's been a a true challenge. And what happens is that I thought that when I started twenty years ago, that you and I would have this conversation today, and think that it had gotten better. And, and, and the problem is that it hasn't, you know, we've had to adapt in a different, it doesn't mean acceptance is very different from being allowed to do something, right? Uh, it, the, the reason what Claire Smith and, and all these pioneering women, you know, dealt with at one point was the fact they couldn't even come into the clubhouse, right? They were denied access to do their, to their place of work. Right now, we have plenty of access. The problems is the acceptance, right? We've seen it recently out there, you know, with the vitriol and the comments again against uh, women in sports. And it's it's a very difficult thing to do. And it's particularly difficult as a woman of color. We have a, we have a joke that we have all the strikes against us, right? It's like, it's every one of them. Because you're not only a woman, you're a woman of color. And then you are, you know, in, in, a, in a sport that is the biggest boys club, you know, that exists in many ways. Some people say it's the NFL. I can guarantee you that it's not. I've covered them both. And um, Major League Baseball is a lot tighter in terms of welcoming, right, those voices in there. As we know, uh, this year is the first time that we ever have a full-time coach in Alyssa Nacken uh, with the San Francisco Giants. And there's, you know, there's still to this day, even though there's plenty of qualified women and we have played baseball for more than a century, there isn't a single woman who has been a general manager or assistant general manager of a team in baseball. So, you know, we have a lot of places to go and we still have a lot of ground to cover. And unfortunately, we have retroceded and, and everything that we've seen with, with everything out there, it's getting worse. And, and I really didn't expect that to happen. So it's been a very difficult, difficult time to be on social media and have to handle uh, quite a bit of, uh, of the vitriol and the things that they say out there against women in sport. You know, Marley, as someone in my positions uh, that works oftentimes with students, uh, you know, I say to them all the time, uh, you know, this country prides itself on, quote unquote, being progressive. And if anything, yes, we yes. really are not progressive. Oh. You know, just the idea, even even the top of this conversation to talk a little bit about politics, but to only have, you know, recently have a woman running for the presidency or, you know, finally having a, a vice presidential candidate that is a woman, a woman of color, too. I think it's amazing that again for a country that typically prides itself on being progressive i think we are anything but yeah that's the problem and, and and it's one of those things i feel that a lot of people will give you the line of well if you don't like leave right we, we've heard that a million times and what i would like to extend to those people is that sometimes when you have pure discrimination that is in your face it can be better because you can handle it it's right there in front of you you know how to attack it but insidious discrimination and insidious that is the worst one the one that you think that all these people are on your team and they're champions for you and behind their back you know that's behind your back pardon me you know exactly that's not it so that's even harder right and, and we understand that in terms of women in sport the, who cover sport and journalism the United States is, you know, far, you know, above any other country in the world. That, let's be clear. That is the truth. Just by numbers, it exists. And actually just, you know, being a very large country. So just by, by numbers, it also happens. But, you know, the acceptance of women in sport, it, it's been such an interesting kind of path for me because Latin women have been seen in one way in sport, and that is certainly our fault, right? There's been a lot of women out there who have been put in positions where it's all about their looks and not about their knowledge. And that has been really prevalent in a lot of communities, but particularly in the Latin community, right? That is something that every time we see, you know, you see a soccer game or you see this, you know, you're not there to listen to the girl. You're there to look at how short her skirt is. And that is a huge problem that we have among Latino you know, sports fans, and it happens all the time. And it is an issue that we continue to deal with. So as a Latino, as a Latin woman who started covering sport, I needed to fight that 
stigma too. And it's one that is very difficult to fight. People think that you are in that clubhouse, you know, husband hunting, which is the one that I've heard before, which is hilarious to me. And um, things like that, that they don't think that you are there just to do your job. And, and when I mention insidious, it means that fact what, okay, you're in here, but I have zero respect for you. And gaining respect in this business is the hardest thing to do. Well, I definitely appreciate your passion and your <laughs> perspective on these topics. I know it's definitely not easy topics for people to talk about. So. I'll get in a little trouble, but you know I never shied away from that. <laughs> Before we let you go, I want to talk about more lighthearted stuff. You know, just Let's do that. Your perspective <laughs> on the Yankees and then also kind of the field for the postseason. I think this will be an hmm. interesting year. I think we've seen it in the NHL and the NBA now with some teams that were maybe expected to go to the championship rounds that – did not get there. I know the Yankees have been hot of late, but your thoughts on the Bombers? Well, I think the Yankees haven't proven yet that they are a consistent enough team that deserves to go to the World Series. Now, I'm going to be very fair to them and say, you know what, in this season, they have proven enough, right? This is a one thing that is getting lost in this conversation, and I see it out there all the time in this blatant criticism of these guys of kind of making fun of them, or you're a scrub and you're this and that. That offends me to the core. People go, why? If he is a scrub, let's say in the case of Gary Sanchez, you know, if he is hitting 100 and striking out 1,700 times, isn't he a scrub? And my answer to that is you try playing professional baseball in a pandemic. Some people are handling a lot better than others. Some people are performing, you know, I mean, incredibly, right? We see what Fernando Tatis and the San Diego Padres are doing. We see what the Los Angeles Dodgers are doing. We see what the White Sox and the Marlins have done, right? Even here in Toronto, what the Blue Jays are doing. I'm sorry, in Toronto. You see, this is what happens in Buffalo, um, what the Blue Jays are doing. The Yankees have not been consistent. You know, it is a team that it depends, but the, the, the thing is they are getting healthy, and, you know, and they're getting hot at the right time. Garrett Cole had this great line. They asked him, Garrett, are you mid-season form? You know, and we're getting, you know, right now to September. And he said, I hope not. And they're like, what? Because you never want to be in mid-season form. You want to be towards post-season form, right? And that's exactly what the Yankees have not shown. They have a week to prove right now that they're in, you know, in postseason form. They really got to hold on to that home field advantage because that is going to to, to matter in this series, right? You just said it. It's a different thing this year with this 16 teams and with this playing, you know, three game series. It will matter to the Yankees. Just look at Luke Voigt's numbers at home and on the road. I mean, it's it's really pretty obvious. So the Yankees have to play better. And that's the only thing. When the pitching is working, the hitting is not working, that balance isn't really there. And they get kind of frazzled with teams that they can't control, right? Teams that are a little bit of a wild card, like the Blue Jays. Like, who are these people and who do they think they are? And don't they know that we are the New York Yankees? And um, us being the New York Yankees is not a good argument anymore. <laughs> Yeah, of course. You mentioned a few of the teams that I thought actually might be right there to win the World Series. I think the yeah. Padres are a serious threat. I think it's ironic that the Marlins have had some problems with their <laughs> COVID-19, but, you know, they could end up being uh, kind of a spoiler come uh, come the postseason. I, I like the Oakland Athletics winning the Western Division. Uh, any of those teams, aside from the Dodgers, do you think really could end up playing playing spoiler? The problem is the pitching. I don't see any of those teams outside the athletics and the Dodgers having enough arms to pull through. And that's the thing that it's going to matter, right? We look at the Marlins and we see what they're doing. We look at the Blue Jays and we see what they're doing. And then you look at their bullpen numbers. And even though the bullpen numbers for the Yankees are awful, if you really compare them, right, with that much talent, it doesn't, you know, they're not awful if you see them at value. But if you compare them by talent, they are awful, right? Like this is this is one of the greatest group of arms in baseball, and that's the key. If you have one of the greatest group of arms in baseball, it's going to work at one point. It's really it's really going to it's going to hurt you at some points, but it's going to benefit you. And I don't know that so many teams have that in their arsenal. I can see the Minnesota Twins having it, but if they find the Yankees in the playoffs, that's going to be very difficult for them because we know how the Twins perform against the Yankees in the playoffs. <laughs> We've seen it time and time again. It's historically you know, accurate that they've won whatever it is, over 10 games in a row over the Minnesota Twins, but it's about pitching, Bobby. So I don't think that a lot of those teams have enough pitching. We appreciate you coming on, Marley. Always great to catch up and to talk to you. And best of luck with the playoffs. Thank you for having me, Bobby. Thanks, thanks Chris, for making us look good. <laughs>